Welcome to the seventh episode of Portfolio Cast. Today we're speaking with Anthony May. Having started his work with a portfolio career before it was even known as a portfolio career, Anthony has gone on to create The Distance, an award-winning app agency, and is now looking back to his portfolio roots to carve out his next chapter. Welcome, Anthony. Hi, I see. Great to have you here. I'd love to start right back at the beginning before you created The Distance. As a developer, and as I said, you had a portfolio career before it was known as a portfolio career. As a freelancer, how did you use your freelancing portfolio career to your benefit? I never really thought about it like that. It was a lot I learned without realising it. So when I had a full-time job, I also had lots of freelance work on the side. Mm -hmm. So when I actually did step out into the business world on my own with, with my business, I actually already had a wealth of portfolio and customers and everything else. Mm -hmm. So my first year, I earned the same as I did in my full-time job. And that was only because I had already created this collection of existing clients and everything else. So without realising it, I guess I did have a portfolio career. And networks are really important to how we all work, but even Mm. more important right now. Do you still have people that you lean on from the past or people that you have been inspired by when you were first setting up etc yeah when I stepped out Mm. I relied heavily on my network so before I stepped out I'd had six full-time jobs in various agencies around Yorkshire and if it wasn't for those and the close relationships I built in every single one of those agencies the startup business I had and the the immediate clients I had I wouldn't have I wouldn't got anywhere Mm. I didn't know how to do sales I didn't know how to do marketing And it was simply, I was inundated with calls from my previous colleagues and managers and employers who needed me to carry on doing my skills because they knew how good I was at whatever I did and it fit what they needed. And that just became my client base. And nowadays, Um, it's very different, my networking. My networking is now my peers, various other business owners. And especially in this, this certain time that we're all going through, they're really, really important. So I'm part of a growth group on the back of a, a course I did. We've known each other now for the best part of six years. In the real world, we got together every three months and visited each other's offices and we knew, know each other's businesses intimately now. Mm. But we got together and every week we have a call, every Thursday morning, just supporting each other, making, yeah. helping each other make some really, really big decisions this year. It's been absolutely valuable. Oh, that's fantastic here. Yeah. You went on to create The Distance, obviously, and this year the business was named App Agency of 2020, which is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we've done done well awards-wise this year. Really Yeah, of course, like most startups, it wasn't all plain sailing. And I know that everything is fantastic now, but would you mind going back a bit and talking about the pivot that you had to make to get to where you are now? Yeah, I guess those two things kind of came in the other way around for us. So we have been through a roller coaster over the last 12 years. At a point we have, have nearly closed and I've, I've been quite open and spoken about that in the past. Mm. But the first and the most major pivot we did was right at the start. So yeah. my skills were originally as web developer. I stepped out as a, a freelance web developer. Within probably nine months, I wasn't doing any web development. I was, I'd use my technical skills to embrace the mobile space I found it fascinating. I've been doing web development for a long period by that point. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a new challenge. So I ended up merging my business with someone else. He took on the web work and I focused purely on mobile. And that's where I planted my flag. And I've been flying it for the best part of 15 years now, dedicated purely on mobile development because the market just flourished. And I guess that's one of the important things when you're running a business you have to look for those opportunities Mm. I'm already seeing what potentially needs to be a a minor pivot for us right now Mm. based upon some changing in technology and if Apple make a decision quite soon we're going to have to pivot a little bit uh, quite quickly yeah understanding your market and understanding who your potential clients going to be or or your clients are going to be is so 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 important but also taking on like you say, taking on new challenges that you're passionate about. And I'm guessing that your passion has led you throughout all of the development of so many different apps and that change from web to mobile. Yeah, I'm my friends I used to live with when I was at slightly older used to call me a, a social geek. Um, <laughs> I, I was blowing up computers at the age of 13, thanks to the, my mum and dad's support for that passion of mine. <laughs> but I, I found that my mum and dad had made me quite a rounded individual. And so I was able to communicate and everything else with people yet still talk about technology and dumb it down to a level that become a conversation. Whereas 
the typical outlook of what a, a techie was was glasses with a plaster between them <laughs> only came out between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m and had long greasy hair so I kind of broke that mold a little bit and and now we're all technologists right we have to be yeah, yeah absolutely yeah there definitely was those those stereotypes that were very hard to avoid <laughs> um, but uh, well done for flying the flag on that one too <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people professionals business owners are going to be facing the sort of struggles that you have done in the past and you know you've been through you know 12 years running you've been through a recession or you've come out of the other side of one recession and they may be looking with concern to 2021 what advice would you give to somebody who is where you were at you know having to make those decisions about what to pivot or what to change everyone would love to have a, a crystal ball with the answers in but they don't exist <laughs> so the best that anyone can do is think plan strategize try and predict things there is a book by Richard Branson and it, the whole topic of the book is basically how he'd make big gambles but they weren't really gambles because they were always calculated so he knew that he could spend two million pounds taking a risk yeah and it was a complete risk and but he was he knew that he could throw away that two million pounds say we have to be in that sort of mindset. We have to take the risks. We have to be very wary of what we're doing, but there is always going to be a bit of a gamble. Just try and be as calculated, plan ahead, make sure that you do have a buffer or something to support the fallback plan, I guess. Mm. Uh, like we're talking about here, a portfolio career is great for that. If you've got fingers in lots of different plot eyes, some may fail, others m may succeed. And then you can quickly make your pivot decisions based upon the success stories and not the failures. Yeah, we've actually just published an article looking at startups or how rather startups can be created from portfolio careers. What sort of advice would you give to someone who has that burning entrepreneurial spirit and is looking for an outlet and, mm. and to create a new startup potentially? Yeah, I mean, it drives a lot of us and it is very, very tempting because people see the news stories of these massive success stories that people have had with these these side hustles and everything else mm. the problem is the big news stories are, are thin and far between in terms of the massive success mm. any startup well all right 99 percent of startups need a lot of work there, yeah. there is a massive commitment to get them over that line from a great idea to something that has got longevity and, and as we all know start most startups fail within a few years and it's gutting to see so any entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, as I call those that want to focus on the app space, mm -hmm. they need to be really, really committed. And that commitment needs to be thought through carefully because the time commitment is one thing, but it then will look at affecting your family life. You have to have the support of other people around you willing to let you have that. And as you sort of say, you need something else. You've got plenty of cash and you can go all in. Great. But a portfolio career is the ideal way for people to support that ambition that opportunity but you've got to then try and get that time balance right if you then look for vc funded for example they're going to want you 100 percent committed yeah. so you've got to think carefully about where the time commitments is and are you going to be resilient and patient enough to wait to get to that point of confidence that it is a, a long-term goal rather than just a short-lived dream yeah i mean there is a difference between starting up a startup and having a business that recognizes the different roles you have so you can be self-employed stick a company name on it you know attach yourself to different roles etc and still have a portfolio career you don't necessarily have to go down the startup route but there's definitely the excitement there with startups isn't there yeah 100 percent. yeah and there's a lot of support for them mm -hmm. there is a huge amount of businesses that are able to support you with a lot of free advice free content everything else Starting a business in the 21st century is mm -hmm. very, very different to what it was before. Even the local governments have lots and lots of provision for new businesses. So the opportunity is there for those that, that have the confidence and the, the bit between the teeth and the, the sheer strength to do it, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. Bringing us up to the present day, you're now embarking on a new chapter of your own career and you're developing yourself as a mentor or a consultant and taking on board positions. How are you approaching these new opportunities, having run your own business for a number of years? 
Sure. So the the two kind of are very intermixed. So our clients come to us and many of them are the startups that we've just been talking about Mm -hmm. and they have great ideas, but their background can be anything. They aren't necessarily technically astute. They won't necessarily know the right decision. So I've always worn a bit of a hat in their camp. And so in many cases, I've acted as a, an interim CTO or digital director or wh- whatever the t- title might have been to help mm-hmm. them with that, that vision from the technical aspect. That's what our whole business is able to provide. As the business continues to develop and the startups we start to support start to grow, mm-hmm. I am more often asked to, to take a more formal position in that sort of space and help with a more permanent role. And I do see that sometime in my future. It's, it's not immediately, but as our business continues to grow and develop, I will be able to have a more formal commitment to some of our clients and give them that more permanent fixture. Will you be looking outside of your client base for new opportunities or are you keeping it close to home, close to what you know? It's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Uh, We've started to structure our proposals in in various different ways. So we can now offer parts of our service rather than necessarily the full app development life cycle. Yeah. One of the most important parts is that discovery element at the start where we help work with businesses just to define, structure and explicitly capture the requirements for that client. Mm. And that's then used to go on to development or go for a funding round, put it out for crowdfunding. And we're doing a lot more of that initial piece of work, which is what someone in my sort of position can help a business do. Mm -hmm. Find that idea, justify it, do the due diligence about the technical side of it before they start to make that big investment. We will end up doing a lot more of that for a much wider number of customers Mm -hmm. than those that do go through a full development lifecycle with us. Where do you find the most interest? Is it still in app development or is it in that initial phases or is it helping and mentoring people with fantastic ideas but need that support I've always found it in two places so one I never stepped out because I wanted to run a business it just happened organically for me some of the proudest stuff for me in business as having a team and watching them and being able to support their careers and one of the my most satisfying things is watching some of our staff get mortgages knowing that they work for us we're contributing to the the next stages of their life mm. the other side of it is the business side luckily in our agency world we service and support businesses in most types of industry everything else so I've been able to experience business from window manufacturing to lorry drivers to markets to you name it. I've been there at the cold front, seen what's going on and tried to help them put mobile and digital into those spaces. And that's what fascinates me. The different types of business, the way they work, everything. And from every single one, I learn more about how to run our business, but also more about how we can then support businesses in completely diverse markets. So the sort of stuff we do for big enterprise, we can use in small startup. Mm -hmm. And the cool, innovative stuff that's happening in startup, we can help improve big enterprise. So Mm -hmm. it is fascinating. And the diversity is what's always, always excited me in business. We definitely see that um, happening even on our Catapult course, for example, within the community. Our community yeah. is so diverse, yet you have people from completely different walks of life and completely different industries coming together and talking about ideas that they've never faced. Or, But you can find the connections and you can find the similarities or the, you know, pinch an idea from here and an idea from there and, and make it work for somebody else. That's definitely an exciting space to be within. Yeah. Have you found anything that helps you balance between your main role in the agency and your newer ventures and where you want to go well I think this sort of networking element that we've we've been talking about Mm -hmm. and the number of different people that I see around me gives me this passion to go and do other stuff seeing what other businesses are doing and the opportunities that people carve for themselves in the startup world and and even in the general enterprise world and Mm. I like that variety and I like that and that's what drives me I see the passion in people and I just want to work with as many people and support them as as I can I've I always have in the earlier days of the distance uh, our office was on the university campus in York and Mm. we ran boot camp programs for the students it became part of their um, extracurricular scores Mm. they could run to go through our boot camp learn about app development and then 
pitch to us what their app ideas were in order to win a prize. I love sharing my knowledge. It, it's mm-hmm. one of the things that, that does drive me in business. And and I want to find more ways that I can share my my 15 years of developing apps and uh, to make more people more successful. Mm. Yeah, and you, I mean, that's definitely something, especially having the kind of niche that you do and having the experience that goes along with that niche is so hard to find and often people who have that experience are tucked away in full-time jobs and are not oh, able that's it yeah to share their experience or haven't taken that jump yet to, to start changing things up on top of all of these different roles that we've been talking about there is of course real life <laughs> not there just is. all that your wife is part of the distance and you've just welcomed your daughter into the world 12 weeks yep. of <laughs> How do you create balance between work and play? And given not just the fact that you you know you're both involved in the company, lockdown, various different uh, ways that we have had to deal with this year, definitely come into play because the boundaries are so blurred. So how do you keep that balance between all of the all of the elements in your life? I think this is hold my hands up time and say I'm not the person to ask. I am absolutely terrible at this. Um, <laughs> so it's more a do as I say, not as I do answer, to be honest. It is really difficult. Running the business together has been fantastic, but it does have those sort of challenges as you sort of highlight there. What I've always been terrible at is being able to disconnect one from the other. Mm-hmm. And we would often be sitting in a bar, taking some time out for ourselves and over a glass of cosmopolitan or something similar we'll be discussing what the next few months of the business looks like which then would end up with heated discussion and not exactly what you want yeah I mean even now more so now I have a a daughter I'm having to make sure I take that commitment so I am taking more time fix out of the business to make sure that I I get that balance because even 12 years in business the the hours I have to put in every every week is is still more than most people would commit to their full-time job Mm. so no matter what business you run, you're always going to find that and weeks will be long and other weeks you'll have more flexibility, but you just have to have a try. <laughs> I say have, yeah, <laughs> try and have as much separation of those concerns as possible and mm. try and segment time, make sure you've got the time allocated in the right amounts because work-life balance and, and health and well-being and everything else is becoming even more headline stories of the news all the time and Mm. I'm a very very resilient person with pretty leather skin but not everyone is and you need to make sure that that balance is continuous especially when we're talking about the startups that earlier is Mm. you've got to prepare for that because you need the people around you to appreciate what's going to happen in the next few months of their lives and and what that disconnect is going to be like so they've got to think that through carefully and make sure as a team, they're probably committed to it rather than an individual. Yeah, it's amazing how many news stories there are about it and how often we can tell other people, especially when yeah, we're yeah. running businesses, you're probably telling your staff to make sure they're looking after themselves. Yeah, we, we have lots of very, very conscious well-being and mental uh, check-in processes that we yeah. have with our team. We're, te- we're forcing people to take holiday when we think they need it. We've moved to a four-day working week um whilst everybody's working remotely because they're finding four days of solid coding or whatever it is they do in our in our roles yeah um is is hard when they don't have the general office banter and the water cooler chat or and and a break over lunchtime and things like that people do spend more time at the keyboard and Mm -hmm. we try and force them to to have more of a balance We've talked about, you know, lockdown, you know, obviously comes into a lot of conversations at the moment. It has affected our lives in so many different ways, as we've discussed. I know networking is a big part of how you work. You know, we've talked about the fact that without your network that you created originally, you wouldn't have been able to do the things that you did when you when you started out, when you stepped out. What advice would you give on making the most of networking in this new remote normal? I think it needs to be a much more conscious thing for people to do. In the normal times, I, I'd be bouncing around London, going from a client meeting to another client meeting, and I'd have a few hours here or there to spare. So I'd I'd hit up one of my contacts and treat, meet for a coffee. Yep. If I was down for the night, there would always be events happening. So I could always find something to attend. 
those things don't happen anymore. That spontaneity, the diversity of, of those encounters, mm. you have to find them. And networks like yours and various other online professional places, we need to take advantage of them. I think what the events that I would normally be going to, where I would do networking, I think quite a lot of them are missing out on actually having a networking session at the end of them. Yeah. And so it's important for the end creators to help create more networking opportunities because the events become very dry you finish don't move on to the next thing yeah and there's a hundred people you could have chatted to if if you're in a, an event space or whatever it might have been so you have, i think we do we all have to take advantage of it or we need to commit more to social media and put ourselves out there at least even in a comment thread we're, we're communicating we're still talking mm. to people we're still sharing our stories and everything else so i think linkedin is an important place for everybody right now despite what people might think about it and how some people are using it to share their family stories. It, it's a space where people are yeah. and they want to communicate. They want to talk. They want to engage in a conversation because it's just as important for them as it is for you to share it. Yeah. So we need to take full advantages of these online platforms and make sure we do engage and, and not be scared to share because mm. everyone else is in the same boat right now. Yeah. So. yeah, I find it very interesting that there is this whole debate about how much we should be sharing on a professional network. I mean, my question is always like, how much would you share in the office? If you needed to talk to somebody or if you needed to reach out your network and ask for help, why shouldn't you be doing it online as much as you would have done in, in an office space? Well, yeah, you don't really want to know how much I share in the office because it's always <laughs> way too much. <laughs> and I've got a, a baby grow with the branding on for our, our daughter, I'm trying to judge whether that LinkedIn suitable or not. <laughs> oh, it is 100% LinkedIn suitable because I want to see it. <laughs> I'll make sure you get tagged then, Lexi. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Boundaries can, we've already talked about it, boundaries are blurred at the moment. But I think, you know, showing yourself as a human being in the stories that you tell, whether that's on your website or whether that's on your blog or whether that's on your social media or the conversations you have over the phone or on a Zoom call, is so important to keep that human element because that's what we mm. buy into right yeah yeah 100 percent. and especially people that are selling themselves they're selling their own consultancy their skills their knowledge all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. they have to be putting it out and sharing their personal opinion and yeah. don't be scared of doing it in my opinion that's what people want to hear yeah. the people buying into you want to see you not some nice packaged up overly produced uh, whatever it might be I mean mm. you'll hear me talking very straight and very honest and I've always been able to be like that I, I, I wear my my life on my sleeve really and it's worked well for me it's worked well for me for years I'm always brutally honest with customers we won't onboard a customer if we don't think their business is going to be a success so get stuff peer tested if you're in a startup world but don't trust your friends and family they are not enough of a litmus to justify long-term investment in a business yep. so Get it out there. Put it on social. If it's not too exclusive, get it out there. You get get some real public feedback. Why not? Yeah. And that I mean, that works for startups and it works for portfolio careers. You know, if you're deciding yeah. to take the step, you know, maybe you don't want to do it as publicly because if you're still in a, in a role. But, you know, you can still market research. You can still find out ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you, and as you say, your network's there, right? So mm. that person that's about to step out will know half a dozen people that probably would consider paying for their services at some yeah. point in their future give them a message drop them a whatsapp just yeah. just see what they think i'm sure yeah. you'll get some honest feedback whatever whether it's good or bad it's worth <laughs> having absolutely this is a question that comes up a lot how do you define success right now and how has that changed over the years well, I kind of yeah, covered some of that earlier about people mm. getting mortgages. That That's a big thing for me. I've kind of had a, an informal, unwritten mantra to what I want in life and business. And I think this is what underpins what drives me and everything else. And what I've always wanted to do is create a business where everybody wants to be or everyone wants to be part of it mm. and nobody wants to leave. Whether that be customers, staff, suppliers, you name it. I, I just want it to be a great place which does what it does people enjoy doing it with us whatever that relationship looks like and I just want to keep doing that I, I want customers to walk away happy and I want them to write great reviews about us because they've had a great experience we aren't just a lock and shot company and we, we don't just deliver on onto a brief and 
you'll get the relationship and the advice and career experience of all of our team mm. and so it's going back to those human journeys that that's exactly what people are buying and and people want that it's not about a, a box ticking exercise so mm. success is just I guess all those things sharing that knowledge growing everyone else not just ourselves and they're the sort of things that drive me that's what I find is success to me it's, it's not just us as a business it's our clients doing well our our clients apps getting downloaded our clients making great headway getting bought out getting investment whatever it might be mm. it's it's success comes from all those things as much as it does from the work we've done for them mm. That's a really good way of putting it. And you can definitely see that in how you are as a business owner, but also, you know, where you're going with mentoring, et cetera. Like the, at the heart of everything you're doing is how it's going to affect other people. That's definitely heartening to see. It helps my vanity and my, my insecurities, <laughs> my, my own personal <laughs> validation <laughs> in the world. But uh, your way was better. <laughs> Yeah. can you tell i'm in marketing <laughs> <laughs> so with entrepreneurial spirit that comes with creating startups or going out on your own and, and stepping out and being a portfolio professional there's also curiosity hmm. and i think i'd like to ask a curious and nosy question if you right. could fascinated if you could do anything career-wise what would you do that's a good question i always thought i would be a good private eye <laughs> being a technical person I have a problem solving nature mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily nosy or nitpicky I don't think I necessarily would be a good one yeah but I would have loved to have done that investigative problem solving world and if not I'd have loved to be in some form of public service like the firefighters or a policeman I just yep. would love to be, be saving people I just never knew I had the confidence to do it for people to be honest but I don't know something along those lines <laughs> yeah. I, I was born and bred into digital and so yeah. it the, my path was carved from an early age the passion was there so mm. I never really had to question where I was going in life yeah. and I, it's, I've got to where I have completely organically without much push or much decision so mm. I feel quite lucky other people pivot change flex they have to find themselves in their path and everything else whereas mine has been it's just kind of happened and it's happened the way I guess my passion has driven it yeah. So I've I've always been slightly cautious, but I, I'll gamble and I'll make the next step and I'll see where that takes me. If it doesn't work, I guess I'll pivot. <laughs> but they're only little pivots. They don't have to be like full 180s by any means. It can be 10 degrees off here, there or everywhere. We've had to do that as as an in the app industry. We've only been the app industry has only been around 11, 12 years. Yeah. We've had to change so much in that time because the industry has changed. Mm. We, we started with iOS. We moved to Android. We had a quick go with Windows Phone because that existed for a, a brief pipe <laughs> dream by Microsoft. Windows, but yeah, we did. <laughs> I had a great Windows Phone. It's fantastic. And now we're looking at web being back again as the, mm-hmm. the platform of choice. It's it's continually changing in the tech world. And, and that's why I like it. But to me, those things are little pivots. That's, I guess, natural progression mm-hmm. of technology. And we all have to brace that in our careers nowadays. So. Yeah, yeah. Mini, mini pivots, I guess, is my my, my top tip. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good tip. If you were to start again, to go back to the beginning, is there anything that you would have done differently? I'd have probably planned ahead a little bit more mm-hmm. before I stepped out. I stepped out on just one day purely on a whim because I got frustrated with the previous MD. But I knew I had confidence doing so. It wasn't a blind leap of faith for me. I was lucky. Mm-hmm. End of year one, I hadn't accounted for corporation tax because I didn't even know it was a thing. So a little bit of planning, a little bit of education yep. before you make such wild, wild decisions is probably a good thing. And now I have a good team around me. We have great accountants, various other things, business advisors that we make very strategic decisions. Some of them are gambles, but they're, they're, they're gambles with as much confidence as we possibly can get to beforehand. And mm. um, the best thing is to think ahead before... You make that wild decision and yeah. it will be, it will be feel a big step, but it will give you more confidence to push yourself harder if yeah. you know a bit more of the plan rather than taking it on a whim. Yeah, that is really good advice to end on. Thank you so much for your time and for the giggles. I'm glad that we've done a, a pre-Christmas one where we can have lots of giggles. <laughs> <laughs> I need um, flashing lights really in the background. So is it time yeah. for some eggnog now? Is that yeah. what, what the next goal is? It's, it's nearly five o'clock somewhere. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Anthony. And I look forward to seeing everything that's going to come from distance and from you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Alexi, and, and good luck to everybody that's taken this trip uh, along a portfolio career. It's, it's a great opportunity and uh, hopefully our paths will cross. Yes, brilliant. Thanks very much. <laughs>